So I just want to show you the hound dogs. Here is the beautiful pink one and what the face looks like and her beautiful flower. And then here is the side and the back. She also has a name tag. And the name is Daisy, and on the other side it says, I belong to Jackie. So you can have all kinds of fun with your dogs, make them very unique. With this dog, you also have behind the flower, there's a hidden pen. This is a little compartment that I show how to make with a little hidden pen. And also what's nice about her is there's hidden compartment. So back here you can have your journal and some, and I show you what items that you could put in there. And there's going to be a separate video tutorial for the skirt. Then when you push the skirt a little bit onto the back, you have this fuzzy soft area which is optional that you can make. And inside you also have some art supplies because she likes to draw a lot so there's some fun activity pads too that I show you in the video tutorial I show you everything that I put in for her so it's just a little fun kids like how to have fun different things then with the boy one Here's the boy one, and I show how to make this one a little bit differently. So you can see the blue in his face, pretty face. And then he also has a name tag. It says, I belong to Luke. On the other side, his name is Brave. And then with Brave, he has a pair of pants with pockets. And then he also has a little compartment where you can put little toys. He has a little bubble blower. And then there's some cars, because he loves cars. And then also on his back, there's a very soft area. And then he also has some activity pads in there with some crayons. So I just wanted to show you the difference in the types of yarn. This yarn is a softer yarn, like baby soft yarn. So it makes a smaller body for your dog. The same pattern with the Red Heart equiv equivalent or Big Twist. And this one I used was Big Twist Yarns, Value Yarn, and the color was Royal Blue. I had to use two of these for the larger dog, one for the head and one for the body, and also the ears. So I completely used up two skeins of this Big Twist Value Yarn. but. What I wanted to show you is though, even though it's the same pattern, you still increase to the same size, it's going to be a lot larger than with the softer yarn. So yarn will make a difference even though it's the same pattern. So you'll, you can decide which, you know, how you want to make the body, whether you want it the same size. But I show you how to increase so you can increase to a lesser number or to a higher number whatever you decide for the size of your body and then the length the length with the softer yarn I made 55 rows with this one whereas this one was only 44 so you can see that they're about the same size but because of the different yarn it's going to make it a, a difference so even though you're using the same size hook and following the same pattern 
yarn choice can also make a big now, difference. Now I just wanted to show you all of the items that I got from the dollar store that are going to go into the dogs. For These are going to be gifts for my niece and nephew. But here are some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And again, all of these were a dollar. And I got the cars, bubble blower, turbo wheels, fruit scented gel ink, artist neon paper pad, 3D drawing pad, looks like a lot of fun. This little journal book, it's only a dollar. Cute little dog on the front with the googly eyes. Some colored pencils. And then two play pads, jumbo. Just have a lot of fun games in there. So this one's for the girl. And then this one is for the boy. And they just have some fun games in there that they can play with. So I'm going to show you where I'm going to place all of the boy's items first. So I'm going to put his truck in there, as well as his cars. And then I'm going to put the bubbles in there, as well as his bubble blower. And then I can close up the pants. And then I'm going to put his play pad in here. And then I'm going to put his crayons right on top. And that's the little boy's toys all put away. Now for the girls items, I'm just going to put her journal right into the bottom. And you could put other things in here too. I'm going to put her artist pad in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and close up. Then, over on the back portion, I'm going to put her 3D drawing pad in. As well as the giant activity pad. And I'll put her color pencils in there, as well as the fruit scented gel. Pens. For the body of my pillow dog, I'm going to make a hidden compartment. If you don't like the hidden compartment, you can just close it the same way that you would close the upright hound dog. But if you are making the hidden compartment, this is a different way that you can do it. And I have, um, I made this second piece the same way that you would for the body. You start it the same way. But with this second piece, I'm going to let you know how many rows that I have for this. This one that's going to go inside has only 15 rows. So it's a smaller portion that's going to go right inside. You just take it and put it right inside the body. Make sure that you have the right side facing. And then before you start sewing the edges together, you're going to want to put stuffing inside the body. So I went ahead and put stuffing into the body. And now I'm going to take and put my second piece right in here. And I'm going to sew it with my tapestry needle. 
Then you just take your tapestry needle and you can just sew just the top stitches of both pieces together and then sew it all the way around until it's completely closed. Now you need your four paws to sew onto your dog. These paws are made the same way that you would start the upright hound dog's paws, both front and back paws, except I only made seven rows of one single crochet into every stitch for the short paw. And go ahead and stuff all of your paws and then you can sew them onto your dog. And you can have fun with it. Um, I'm going to do the standard where I put the paws on the bottom of the body. I'm just going to line them up evenly, all of them, all four of them on the bottom of the body. But you could put the feet out to the side too if you wanted. So it's up to you however you want to design your unique dog. But for mine, I'm going to put them right on the bottom also, of the body. Also, I just wanted to remind you to keep the inside of your body out so you don't sew your paws to the inside body. The other hint is make sure that your front paws are facing the front. And the front is the closed end, the completely closed end. This is the side that's going to be sewn onto your head. And then the one that we did, the inner cavity, is going to be the hidden compartment in the back. So just make sure that your paws are facing the right direction when you sew them on to the body. After your feet are sewn on, you can take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and you're just going to take the head and sew the head onto your pillow. So the head I have resting on the table and then I'm going to sew the body to the back of the head. The collar is this, made the same way as the upright hound dog. You can go ahead and put the collar on. And if you want a name tag, you can go ahead and put your name tag on. The tail is also made the same way as the upright hound dog. When you sew on your tail, make sure you position it right on tor towards the back on top of the dog. Before you start sewing, make sure that you have the hidden compartment on the outside so you don't sew the tail to the hidden compartment. And just like with the upright hound dog, I put stuffing inside of the now tail. Now I'm making the back part of the dog and you're going to use whatever color that you want the pants to be for the dog. Since this is going to be for a boy, I just used a Red Heart equivalent tan colored yarn. And I just finished my last increase round of one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the tenth stitch. Now I'm going to make one round of one single crochet into every stitch. So just one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then you can go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up and you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches then you're going to make a chain of one two three four five six seven so a chain of seven one two three four five six seven and then you're going to skip seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then go into the eighth stitch and make a single crochet. Then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up. And this time you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch for two rounds. So one single crochet in every stitch for two rounds. And for the chain of seven I just go into each stitch for one single crochet. So go ahead complete two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch and then come back. Now you're going to want to place the back pants onto your dog and then you want to measure under the dog how far away the feet are. 
So for mine, I need four more rows of one single crochet into every stitch, stitch to reach the feet. So go ahead and complete the number of rows that you need to reach your feet, and then I'll show you how to make the holes for the feet. After you finish whatever amount of rounds that you need to reach the back feet, then you're going to take a yarn marker and place it in the center stitch that runs in the center of the foot. And then the same thing on the other foot. It'll be right, the yarn marker will be in line with the center of your foot. Now you're going to take your yarn marker that you started with and move it up and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch until you reach three, leave three stitches unworked before your, your first yarn marker for the foot. So one single crochet in every stitch, but leave three stitches unworked before your first yarn marker, and then come back. So here you can see I have three stitches before my first yarn marker. Now I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I'm going to skip seven stitches and then make a single crochet into the eighth stitch. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into every stitch until I get to the three next three stitches before my next yarn marker. So I have three stitches that I'm going to leave unworked before my next yarn marker. I'm going to chain seven again. Skip seven stitches. Make a single crochet into the eighth stitch. And you can see how you've made two loops for the legs. Go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch. And then make two more rounds of one single crochet into every stitch and then come back. You should be back to your yarn marker and finished with two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch and now you should have three openings. One for the tail and then you have two for the feet. Now you can take your yarn, your crochet hook and you're going to go into the next stitch over and you're going to make a slip stitch. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Now we're going to change colors for the top part of the pants. I have a little bit of a darker brown that I'm using for the top part of the pants and for the pant pockets. You can see how it has a little bit of a contrast to the tan color that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and join right where I finished off my new color. Just hook the new color and bring it through. Then make a chain of one. And then you can tie a knot. Go ahead and tie a then knot. You're just going to make three rounds of just one single crochet into every stitch. And I'm going to go behind my loose yarn ends and just bury my loose yarn ends as I work. So just one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds and then come back. After you finish three rounds of one single crochet into every stitch with your new color, just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to just bury into your work. Then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and bury all of your loose yarn Now you yarn can it. see what your pants look like on and you can add a few more rows if you want to have more rows on the pants. Now I'm going to show you how to make the back pockets and the tether that will hold the pants in place. Actually you won't even need it. You can just um, open up the back very easily that way. So now I'm just going to show you how to make the pant pockets. For the pant pockets I'm still using my darker brown color and I'm just going to fold over the yarn on itself to form a loop. We're going to make a slip knot. Then just take your crochet hook, and I'm still using my J crochet hook. 
or six millimeter crochet hook. Take my middle finger and my thumb and just place it at the base of the loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of one, two, three, four, five, and then just kind of check and see where you want to place your pockets onto the back. And I want two of them, so I'm going to make mine a chain of eight for both pockets. And then for the pockets, I'm just going to make a double crochet. So I'm going to hold that last stitch with my middle finger and thumb and make a chain of three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch I'm holding. So just yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch across. So I have two more stitches left. Now to move up to the next row, you're going to chain three, and then turn your work, and then you're just going to go into the next stitch over. So not the same stitch, you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a double crochet. And then you're just going to keep making the rows until you have the size of a pocket that you want. I would say probably no more than four rows and then make both of your pockets and then come back. For my pockets I was able to make just three rows of one double crochet in every stitch. Then I just sewed my pant pockets on and this is what mine looks like with the pants on and the pockets in place. Now this part is optional. I like to put this onto the back of the dog because it's so soft. So this is uh, Bernat Pipsqueak yarn and this is Whitey White. The first thing you're going to do, just like you did for the pant pockets, you're just going to fold over the yarn to form a loop. Then you're just going to put your crochet hook right through the loop and hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb then you just yarn over and bring the yarn right through the loop. Now with this yarn you're going to make a chain also, but you're going to make the chain as long as you want for the back of the dog. So what I'm doing, I'm going to show you on the so dog. So here is the back of the dog and I'm just going to make a chain the length of the back of the dog and I'm going to go a little bit past the pants and just cover the back of the dog and half of the sides on both sides with this type of fuzzy soft so yarn. So I'm starting with a chain of 25. Then I'm going to hold that last stitch I made with my middle finger and thumb and then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. That's going to count as my first double crochet for the next row. I'm going to yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that I was holding, and I'm just going to make a double crochet. And then you're just going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across, and then chain three and move up to the next row, just like you did for the pant pockets. And you're just going to make this as long as you want for covering the area of the back, like I showed you, of the dog. So I finished six rows of one double crochet in every stitch and now I'm going to sew it on the sides. I want to sew just the sides, the top, and leave the back end open so that you could put stuff into underneath. So here you can see where I placed it onto the dog and I'm going to leave the back area open and then just sew along the sides, the top towards the head, and then on the other side and that's it. Before you start sewing, make sure that you take the inner compartment out so you don't sew the inner compartment to the outside por portion. Now if you want to keep make it a little bit softer, this is optional, but I used Bernat Pipsqueak and the color is Tickle Me Pink. 
For the button in the center of the flower, I used Bell Buttons by Dritz. For the long pillow hound dog, you're going to make the head the exact same way as the upright hound dog. The body has 55 rows instead of 26 like in the upright hound dog. This one's a little bit longer. If you're going to be using the softer yarn like I use for this one, it ends up being a little bit smaller. The Red Heart yarn will make it a little bit larger, uh, but I like mine a little bit softer, so I decided to use this one. You can either just stuff it with the pillow stuffing, or you can make it the way that I'm going to make it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pillow, and I'm going to use the pillowcase, the outer case only, and I'm measuring the size that I want, and then I'm going to cut it so that it will fit inside of the body. So mine is measuring, I'm still going to use the end that's already sewed shut on the pillow and the side that's already sewed, so I only need to sew the one side, and I'm just going to use my tapestry needle to do an embroidery stitch, which I'll show you how to do. So mine measures about a foot, and I'm just going to cut it here, and I'm making two of the long pillow hound dog, so I'm going to cut and use the other half for the other dog. Now I have the pillow case, and I have one side that's already sewn shut and the bottom is sewn shut, so all I need to do is sew the one side. So I'm going to use my tapestry needle and just do an embroidery stitch right down the side. And I have two of these pieces that I'm going to make do the same thing for. So this is the embroidered pillow that I made, and this is the side that I embroidered, and then I just embroidered closed the end after I stuffed it. I'm going to show you how to make this with my other one, but what I'm going to do with this one, and if you don't like using the embroider stitch, you can, if you have a sewing machine, you can just sew it too, whichever way that you want to, but the side that's going to be open is the side that has the nice edge from the pillow and that's going to be the side that's going to be at the opening. So you're going to stuff some pillow stuffing into the inside towards this side which is going to be where the head is sewn on. And you want to stuff it just enough to where you have the pillow showing because that way they can put their books in here or whatever they want to put on the inside of their dog. To make your embroidery stitch you're going to take your white yarn on your tapestry needle and then you're going to take the two open the open side. Here you have the closed portion and the other side has the closed portion and then you have your opening at the top where you're going to put the stuffing. We're going to start in the bottom corner with the two flaps that have an opening you're going to take your tapestry needle, you're going to come up from the inside, make sure that you leave a long enough end on the other side of the pillow for tying a knot. Then you're going to take your yarn and put it over to the side at an angle, just like this. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle, you're going to go right above where you came out from the underside and then you're just going to take about a couple of centimeters with your tapestry needle and you're going to go inside the loop that you created with your yarn and then when you pull the yarn up it's going to form a little loop with your yarn on the inside of the loop then you're just going to take your yarn again bring it to the side just like you did before, and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go outside of the loop, not on the inside of the loop, otherwise it's just going to come undone. So go on the outside of the loop, you're going to go in about a couple centimeters again, come back up inside that loop, and that is your embroidery stitch. And You're going to do that all along the side of the little pillow that you're creating. Now this is what mine looks like. 
all along the side with my embroidery stitch. And now you can take, after your last embroidery stitch, go ahead and turn your pillow inside out. And then you can go ahead and stuff it. And after you finish stuffing it, come back and I'll show you how to close the top. So you can see how nice the embroidery stitch just keeps it closed and I've stuffed it and made a little tiny pillow. Now I can take and tuck the ends and this isn't, doesn't have to be pretty. It's going to be the inside and no one's going to see it. It's going to be um, hidden in there. The only part they're going to see is this part right here which looks nice. So just take and tuck it in and then you're just going to make an embroidery stitch all across the top of your pillow. So you can see how I folded it in and then I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and then I'm just going to go through the top. I'm going to go in a place that's not too um, thick. And then I'm just going to make my tap my embroidery stitch all across the top and then come back. Now for the body, I put some stuffing into the end where I'm going to sew the head. And then I stuffed my pillow in so that it's towards the end. Now what I want to do is sew my pillow in place right where the pill the stuffing ends and the pillow starts. I'm going to sew a little little couple of stitches to hold the pillow in place so the pillow won't come out and just take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and then I'm just going to go into the pillow and then back up through the body and then I'm just going to sew the pillow in place so it doesn't come out So I'm just going to put a couple of stitches. I'm going to come back out where I came in because I want to tie a knot. And you can see how you can't see the stitches. So I'm just going to cut, leave a long loose yarn in so I can bury my yarn ends. And I'm just going to put a couple of stitches all around so the pillow doesn't come out. So this is what mine looks like and you can't really tell with this. This is the stuffing end right here and this is where I have the pillow. And you might want a pillow for the whole length. You can make it lots of ways um, if you want it a little different. The reason I did mine this way is because I'm going to make it, If you, I'm going to show you, if you just want to close it up you can close it the same way that you do for the upright hound dog. But this one I'm going to show you a, a way where you can close it where you can still have a secret opening where they can put stuff on the inside here, um, little notes or whatever they want to put on the inside of their dog. Go ahead and make the tail and the tail is made the same way as the upright hound dog. The back of the body is started the same way as the body. I increased to one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the tenth stitch. Then you're going to take the yarn marker and remove it and just make one single crochet into every stitch around. So just one round of one single crochet into every stitch around. Then you're going to take your yarn marker and move it up and make one single crochet into two stitches then you're going to make a chain of seven one two three four five six seven then you're going to skip seven stitches one two three four five six seven make a single crochet into the eighth stitch Then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around and then come back. Then you're just going to move your yarn marker up and you're just going to make one more round of one single crochet 
into every stitch and I just want to show you that for this chain seven that you made you just go into each of the stitches and make one single crochet. So one more round of just one single crochet into every stitch around and then come back. Now you can go ahead and take out your yarn marker and then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to bury into your work. And then we're just going to set this aside because we're going to sew the body onto the head before we position the back and sew this portion on. Now you're just going to take and sew the body onto the head and I'm going to sew it, here's the front of the head, I'm sewing it right to the back of the head and I'm putting it right into the center and I'm going to sew it right into the center of the back of the head. You have to allow for the feet so make sure that your feet can fit. You have four of these small feet that will fit on the bottom so make sure when you sew it that you have it positioned where you want and that the opening for the tail is in the back. The collar is made the same way as the upright hound dog except I have a smaller body on my longer pillow hound dog so I started with the chain of 40 for the collar. So you put the name tag on the same way. This one's Daisy and you can. what's nice about these is you can put um, sayings on the back back and this one I put it belong to Jackie. Now if you want the soft part on the pillow then you're just going to get your Bernat Pipsqueak yarn and then you just fold it over on itself to form a loop and then I'm using my J crochet hook or six millimeter crochet hook and then you just hold it at the base with your middle finger and thumb just yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're just going to make a chain for whatever length that you want covered with this type of yarn. So you just keep making a chain for the length that you want. When you come back I'll let you know how large mine was. Mine was a chain of 10, so I made a chain of 10. Then I'm going to chain 1. And then I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook. Bring up a loop two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. And all we're going to make is just a rectangle. So you want your best to keep the same number of stitches in every row, that way it doesn't get smaller or larger, but I know it's kind of a little bit difficult with this type of yarn, but it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just going to be the soft portion on the pillow. So go ahead and finish the length that you want to cover your pillow and for mine I'm just going to cover this front portion of the body of the dog because I want this portion to be open so that you can put items into this part of the back of the dog. Another thing you can do also, if um, you want to make it go a little bit faster, you don't want to make the single crochet, what you can do is when you're ready to move on to the next row, you can chain three. One, two, three. That'll count as your first double crochet for the next row. Then you just yarn over, go into the next stitch over. Then you yarn over and go through two. And then yarn over and go through two and then you just make a double crochet. So this yarn is, is kind of tricky to work with but what's nice is you can't really see the stitches and at the same time that's also a bad thing you can't really see the stitches. So as you can see it goes a little quicker and you get a fuzzy fuzzier area you can't tell that you're using a different stitch once you have it the size that you want, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew it onto your dog. Then you're just going to take a tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that you left for sewing. And then I have 
a little journal that I put in here to keep keep it so I don't go into that area. I want to keep that part of the area open and this is the journal size that I want. Then you just take and sew into the pillow that you made for the inside of the body with your tapestry needle just going in and out sewing the soft fabric that you just crocheted in place so this is what mine looks like with the soft portion and the collar is still movable and sits right on top of the body and now I'm going to show you how to sew the back on go ahead and stuff the tail and then you want the same colored yarn on your tapestry needle then you're just going to position the tail make sure that you sew it on top and then once you have it in place go ahead and sew it just sew it all around the bottom making sure not to sew it to the pillow so make sure you don't sew it to your pillow make sure that you've buried all loose yarn ends then you're going to take and put that area that you left open on the back of the body and put it right over the tail and then you're going to take and just sew the bottom portion of the tail only that way you'll be able to open it and close it so just the bottom portion right along here only now you just take the four feet make sure that you stuff them well and then you just take your tapestry needle and just position all of the feet first before you sew them on to the bottom of the body and when you sew them to the back of the body make sure that you don't sew them to the pillow for the pen holder you're going to get the pen that you're going to be putting onto the dog and use the same colored yarn as the ear of the dog and we're going to start with the magic circle just drape the yarn across your four fingers use your thumb to stabilize then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb then take your J crochet hook or six millimeter crochet hook go under those loops bring up a loop then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make 12 single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of those 12 single crochet and then you have those two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go, pull on the other one until it closes. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around until you have the size that you want that covers your pen. So one single crochet into every stitch around. Then once you have the size for your pen, then you're just going to take and slip stitch into the next stitch over and then finish off. Just pull enough yarn through to sew it onto the dog. This is how I sewed mine on, right behind the ear. You can see where it lies right there. And then you can put your pen right into it. Now I'm going to put a flower right above the ear to hide. You can make your flower any color that you want. And I did mine just this beautiful pink color with impeccable yarn. And this flower, 
you can choose, I have three different rose types that you could choose from, my um, simple beginner rose. This one is the classic vintage rose and I stopped after two rounds. And then I have my pen rose, which is another style you could choose. You could use either a regular sewing needle and thread for your button to sew into the center of your flower. This one, I have a large eye on my tapestry needle and this tapestry needle will fit right through the buttonhole. So I'm going to use my yarn to sew it on. So just take your yarn threader and you're going to put it right through the eye of the tapestry needle. Then you can take your yarn, just hook it, and then bring it right back through the eye. And then you would have to jiggle up and down to get it through. And then you can take your button right in the center of the flower and then just sew it in place. Then I just took and sewed my flower right in front of the pen, so it kind of keeps the pen a little hidden. And then you have this beautiful flower and this pen that's hidden right behind the flower. So this is what her body looks like so far. And you can see that the feet are sewn on and she has her skirt. The skirt is a separate video tutorial if you want to make that. And you can see how it covers up the back hidden compartment. And now, because I want a little thicker body, I'm going to make the top part that goes on top of the back. So I'm using the same kind of furry, farm, furry yarn. And I started with a chain of 25 for this one. It's going to go right on top. I'm going to place it right on the top. I'm going to make it big enough to go right across the top of the dog. And I'm making one double crochet into every stitch until I reach the length that, that I want. So one double crochet in every stitch across. So when I reach the end, I'm going to chain three and turn to start the next row. So go ahead and if you want this part on the back of your dog, you start with a chain of 25 with one double crochet into every stitch. When I reach the end, I'm going to show you how I move up to the next row. Once you reach the end, you can see how it's making a nice furry soft covering. Then you can chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. And then you're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. So this is what the dog will look like after you're done and you have the skirt on the back and then the opening on the back and this is the size of the body in comparison with the head. If you want a little thicker body then you would just keep increasing when we may, we're making our increase rounds. But if you like the way that I had made it, then I'm showing you how to put the top portion onto the dog. You can see how my work is looking. It's making a really soft rectangular pattern that's going to go on top of my dog. And I just wanted to show you if yours is getting bigger as you're working, I can, I'm going to show you how to do a double crochet decrease. So for the next row, I'm just going to chain three. Then I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. And a double crochet into the next stitch. Now I'm going to make a double crochet decrease. You just yarn over, go into the next stitch 
bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two. Now you have two loops remaining, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through three. And that's a double crochet decrease. So you can do those as you work if you need to shorten up your size. So I'm going to make one more at this point. So I'm just going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through three. So you just do that wherever you need to, to shorten it up if you need to. But as long as you get a rectangular soft pattern, that's all you need. I finished my rectangle and mine measures about 14 inches by 8 inches in size. Now you're going to want to take and place the rectangular piece that you just crocheted and place it right on top of the dog underneath the collar. You want the collar to be on top. Then you're going to position the top of the rectangular piece where you want to sew it onto the head. Make sure that you have it even on the dog and placed where you want it. Then you just take your tapestry needle and you just sew it in place. So for my dog, I'm sewing about one, two, about the, here these are actually two single crochets, so two, four, right at the top of the fifth is where I lined up mine and I'm just going to go right down along the top because this will be another area that you can put stuff into. So the other side I put under the skirt and I'm going to be sewing right along the edge making sure not to sew my pillow on that other hidden compartment. So both edges and along the head. I'm going to be sewing so it So now I have the back portion sewed on. You can see there's another area that you can put stuff into on the dog. This is what it looks like on the side and then on the head. And your little book would also fit into that portion. If you want a top for your pen holder, you make it the same way as you did for the bottom. You start the same way. And I made mine three rows. I made it the same color as the flower and I'm just going to sew half of it in place. That way it'll flip open so the pen can be removed. And I'm going to sew it on the outside portion and the inside portion will be free. And this is what my pen cover looks like when I'm done. You can open it up and then hide the pen behind the flower.